Let's check out this nice factorial problem. So our goal is to determine the 2500th digit of 10,000 factorial. And this problem seems like it would be nearly impossible, but in fact, 10,000 factorial and 2500 have been chosen so that they work nicely together in this context. Okay. So the first thing that we're gonna do is determine how many trailing zeros there are in 10,000 factorial. And hopefully that number will be somewhat close to 2,500. Okay, so how can we do that? Well, we can determine how many times 10 divides into 10,000 factorial, but observe that that's gonna be the same thing as the number of times five divides into 10,000 factorial. And that's because multiples of five occur fewer times than multiples of two inside of factorials. And so that means that the number of trailing zeros will be determined by the number of times five divides into, like I said, 10,000 factorial. But there's a general way to do this, and this works for any natural number and any prime. And let's recall that real quick. And I'll just recall that as this fact. So, so the number of times that a prime p divides into n factorial is the floor of n over p plus the floor of n over p squared plus the floor of n over p cubed and so on and so forth. And you generally write this as an infinite sum but in fact it always truncates to a finite sum and that's because this power of p in the denominator will always be eventually bigger than the value in the numerator n, and thus you'll be taking the floor of a number that's less than one. But now if we set all of this equal to k, what I mean by divides into, the number of times p divides into this, is that we can write n factorial as p to the k times some number that I'll call m, where m is not divisible by p. Oops, that's p does not divide m, sorry. p does not divide into m. So using this fact, we can easily calculate the number of times five divides into 10,000 factorial. And so we're gonna need to calculate this number. So it's gonna be 10,000 divided by five. Well, really the floor of that, but that's gonna be a whole number. And then plus 10,000 divided by 25, and then plus 10,000 divided by 125, and then plus 10,000 divided by 625, and then finally plus 10,000 divided by, let's see, it's 3,125, and that's actually gonna be the last number that we'll need because the next power of five will be larger than 10,000. But this is immediately calculable. So observe that this number right here is 2,000, then this number right here is 400, and then this next number right here, 10,000 over five cubed, is pretty clearly 80, and then 10,000 over, let's see, that's gonna be five to the fourth power, or 625, is 16. And then you can see that this turns into 16 over five, but if you take the floor of that, well, we're gonna have three. But then adding all of that up, you see that we get 2499. So in other words, there are 2,499 zeros at the end of 10,000 factorial. So that means that we want the first non-zero digit of 10,000 factorial, i.e. we want to reduce 10,000 factorial over 10 to the 2499 modulo 10 or we need to determine its residue modulo 10, maybe I should say that. Okay, so how could we do that? Well, I'm gonna use a little notational tool, and well, this notational tool is described in the solution to this problem that's in this math magazine issue. But that being said, I've seen lots of problems like this before, and they all use this general strategy. 
And so anyway, the tool here will be this in question mark. So instead of an exclamation mark for a factorial, we've got this question mark. And what this is going to be is the product from 1 to n, but skipping the multiples of 5. So perhaps we could write that as the product as k goes from 1 to n as long as 5 does not divide k. Okay, the product of k. So let's see, we could do a couple of examples of this, or maybe just one example of this to get a feel for what's going on here. So for instance, 12 question mark is equal to 12 times 11 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, and then times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Observe that we had to skip 10 and 5 there because those are the multiples of 5. But now what I'd like to observe is we can in fact write a factorial in terms of this question mark operator pretty easily. And we'll do that by looking at our example up there. So let's start by just writing out all of 12 factorial. Okay, so there we've got it. 12 times 11 times 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, Let's put parentheses around the stuff that will eventually be my 12 question mark. And then after that, what I'm going to do is factor a 5 out of each of these multiples of 5. So notice I can write this one as 5 times 2. And then I can write this one as 5 times 1. And so now if I group everything in my orange parentheses, I can write that as 12 question mark. And then I can take those fives out front and write that as five squared, well, because I've got five times five. And then what's left over is two times one, but I could write that as two factorial. But how's that two factorial gonna work in general? But now let's notice that this two, which is two factorial, and this two and the exponent of five are the same. And how are those related to our original number 12 factorial? we'll observe that they're the floor of uh, 12 over 5. So we can in fact write this as 5 to the floor of 12 over 5, and then times 12 question mark, and then the floor of 12 over 5 factorial. And then we could apply this again to 12 over 5 factorial, or the floor of 12 over 5 factorial until we get something with only question marks. Of course, in that case, since there's no multiples of five that in, are included in that product, we could just change the factorial to a question mark immediately. So now what I'd like to do is prove some general version of this result that we're alluding to here, and then use that to maybe work towards our final goal, which is now the first non-zero digit of 10,000 factorial. All right, so here's a general version of this thing that we saw on the previous board that relates factorials to our question mark operator. So we've got n factorial is equal to 5 to the power floor of n over 5 times n question mark times the floor of n over 5 factorial. And the proof of this is fairly straightforward. You just have to write down what the factorial means. And then, well, after that, what we'll do is factor some stuff out. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So let's take our n factorial and write it in the following way. We'll have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times. Then I'm going to write a 5 in yellow. And then here we'll have 6 times 7 times 8 times 9. And then we'll have a 10 in yellow. And then we're going to keep going on and on and on. And let's see, the very last power of or multiple of 5 we'll have is 5 times the floor of n over 5. And then, well, after that we'll have... Let's see, 5 times the floor of n over 5 plus 1 multiplied all the way up to n. Now, this may be an empty product over here to the right of our 5 times the floor of n over 5 because n might be divisible by 5. But if it's an empty product, that's simply equal to 1. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is observe that I can take this first 5 and write it as 1 times 5. 
This second five can be written as two times five. And then this very last five can be written as, well, the floor of n over five times five. And now, now let's factor out all of the fives, all of the magenta fives. But observe that it kind of counts itself. We have the floor of n over five copies of that five. So that turns into five to the floor of n over five. So let's see, just to be thorough, that's from factoring this, this, the next one, the next one, so on and so forth until that very last one there. And then everything in white, well, that's exactly our n question mark. That's the notation we had before. But now that doesn't take into account everything here that I'm underlining in orange, this one times two times three, so on and so forth, up to this term right here, floor of n over five, but that's exactly the floor of n over five factorial. Okay, so now that we've got this claim, we can immediately apply it to our 10,000 factorial repeatedly until we have it all in terms of these question mark operators. So let's do that. So we've got 10,000 factorial. Well, observe that that's going to be five to the 10,000 over five, which is 2,000. And then we'll have 10,000 question mark and then 2,000 factorial. Notice I didn't need floors there and I didn't need floors there because well, everything was a multiple of five, and it's gonna be a multiple of five for this next case as well. Okay, so now let's bring part of that down. So five to the 2,000, and then 10,000 question mark. And now we need to look at 2,000 factorial and apply our rule over here. So that's gonna turn into five to the 2,000 over five, and in other words, five to the 400. And then we'll have 2,000 question mark, and then 400 factorial. And then, well, we're gonna apply that to 400 question mark, and then whatever's left over question mark, and so on and so forth until we get the following object. So I'll let you fill in the details, but we get five to the two, four, nine, nine, and then we'll have a 10,000 question mark times 2,000 question mark times 400 question mark, times 80 question mark, times 16 question mark, and then finally times three question mark. Okay, nice. And now let's introduce some notation just so that we have it, and that's to set capital N equal to our 10,000 factorial over our 10 to the 2499. And then just recall what we kind of talked about earlier, and that is we want in modulo 10. That's exactly extracting the digit that we want. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of a detour and note the following fact, which is pretty obvious, and that is n is even. That's because, well, we've divided out all the powers of five, but we have not divided out all of the powers of two. So, well, that means it has multiples of two. In other words, it is even. Okay, so now let's look at the following thing. This is gonna be two to the power two, four, nine, nine times n, which is in fact equal to 10,000 factorial over five to the two, four, nine, nine. But that's gonna factor out or cancel this five to the two, four, nine, nine in our expansion that we have here. So in other words, that's gonna be our 10,000 question mark times 2,400, 800, 16, and three, all question marked. And now since we know it's even, well, if we reduce it mod five, then we can put those two things together and find its residue mod 10, which is our final goal here. Well, we can illustrate that by looking at this 10,000 factorial, or sorry, 10,000 question mark, and observe that that's gonna be one times two times three times four and then six times seven times eight times nine, and then so on and so forth to nine, 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 six, all the way up to 10,000. But then how many chunks of four numbers are there there? Well, notice that there are exactly 2,000 chunks of four numbers. And if we reduce each of those mod five, they're all equal to one, two, three, 
4. So again, that's not equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. That's reduction mod 5. They're congruent to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So if we do that to all of those, what do we get? So we're going to have, well, I'll just write that as 4 factorial to the power 2,000. Again, because it's 2,000 chunks of four things for this 10,000 factorial. And then we're going to have a 4 factorial to the 400 for this next one. And then a 4 factorial to the 80 for this next one. And then a 4 factorial to the 16 for this last one. And then finally, this 16 question mark, you can see that that'll cancel down to 4 factorial to the power 3. You might say, well, there's some leftover stuff, the 16. But notice that 16 is 1 mod 5, so that doesn't matter. And then finally, we've got this 3 question mark, which is 3 times 2 times 1. OK, nice. But all of that is mod 5, I should say. But then 4 factorial is negative 1 mod 5. That's either Wilson's theorem, or you can do the straightforward calculation to see that. So that means this 4 factorial is negative 1 to the 2,000. That's 1. Again, this is going to be 1 because it's negative 1 to an even power. Again, we have 1 here, 1 here, negative 1 to an odd power there. So that's going to be negative 1. And then observe that 3 times 2 is 6, but 6 is 1 mod 5. So taking this entire product, what we're going to get is negative 1 mod 5. So here we have all of this is congruent to negative 1 mod 5. OK, nice. So now let's maybe do a partial summary of that and then see how that helps us. So we just determined that 2 to the power 2,499 was con congruent to negative 1 mod 5. And now I want to see what that power of 2 is congruent to mod 5. But now let's observe that 2,499 has a remainder of 3 when divided by 4. So that means that since the exponents are going to work mod 4 because of Fermat's little theorem, we have the following very, very quick calculation. So 2 to the 2,499 will be congruent to 2 cubed modulo 5. Again, we just divide by 4 and keep the remainder. But now 2 is the same thing as 8 mod 5, but then 8 mod 5 is 3. So we have this is 3 mod 5. So that means what we have is the congruence, 3n is congruent to negative 1 modulo 5. But now we can multiply both sides by perhaps the inverse of 3, which is 2, because 2 times 3 is 6, which is 1 mod 5. And we'll see that n is congruent to negative 2 mod 5, again, by multiplying by the inverse of 3. But now, negative 2 mod 5 is the same thing as 3 mod 5. So that means we have our number n is congruent to 3 mod 5. But now we're essentially done. Because let's notice this. We have n is even, and n is congruent to 3 mod 5. So putting those two things together, we see that n must be congruent to 8 modulo 10. But Remember, it's residue class mod 10 is going to be exactly the number that we want. In other words, it's going to be the 2,500th digit of 10,000 factorial. 